Welcome back everyone. This is Zach with New England Sports Talk and today we are going over the six foot one, 175 pound junior guard out of St. John's. He goes by the name of Shibori Pons. Fantastic prospect. We're going to break him down and go over him, uh, go over what his game is and that kind of thing. This video came from, by recommendation, by The Answer. Thanks again bro for the recommendation. Again guys, if you have somebody you want me to review, we're on the final countdown for the 2019 draft. Let me know in the comments. I've got four maybe maybe three or four more players i definitely want to do next uh and i'm going to just be dropping those videos out as quick as i can for you guys so you guys can see them but if there's anybody else any last minute recommendations you want let me know and i'll get to it so as usual the highlights will be on the screen let's break this down and see what he's all about first thing that you're going to see with shimori ponds is his strengths are obviously with the offense side first and we'll get to the defense in just a second but he can just take over games when he's feeling it though dude like he just has a confident shot. You're gonna see this. Don't even worry about it going in. Just look at his stroke, look at his shot selection that he has, and he just shoots with confidence, and that's fantastic. That's exactly what type of player that he's gonna bring. Now he's gonna be off the bench. I don't think he starts at all day one, but coming into the summer league, he's gonna really be able to grow. And depending on how well he performs in the summer league, he might even get a pretty good early rotation on a team that drafts him. So I'm most interested to see him as well in the summer league. I've got a list of players that I really wanna watch and play, pay close attention to in the summer league. And this is one of those guys that I really wanna see. Uh, let's talk about the third thing as well. He is an excellent free throw shooter as well. I mentioned this in some of the other guys as well. When you're good at shooting free throws, I want to point it out because that's a really big deal nowadays. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it really is because there's so many guys that come in the league who can't hit free throws and it just annoys the crap out of me because if you have a team that's you know in a clutch situation, you have to have free throws. Nothing is worse than losing a game because they didn't make free throws, I promise you. If you can name another thing that's worse, let me know in the comments, guys, because I, in my opinion, there's nothing worse than losing a game off of free throws. Free throws are so fundamental. I get it, you're gonna miss a couple of them, but the fact, if you are good at shooting free throws, you've got so much more trust on your exactly. offense, your teammates trust you, you're in a flow, it's easier seeing that ball go through the hoop, uh, get your shot back. He's already a confident scorer as it is. It, the fact that he's able to contribute on the free throw line as well too really helps elevate his game and helps elevate his confidence in my opinion. Other thing is is his uh, assist to turnover ratio. Every three, all three years, every single year he's played in the league, his assist to turnover ratio has gotten better. So he's getting more assists, cutting down the turnovers. That just comes with knowledge of the game confidence again everything comes down with his game it's all about confidence and he's got a lot of confidence in his shot and his offensive game and that kind of thing last thing i wanted to mention as well is he's really good at stealing the ball as well this is a big deal he's a little undersized we're going to talk about that in just a second in the growth areas but the fact that he can still be pesky on defense and getting some good steals whether it's playing the passing lanes or pickpocketing or whatever the case is, just reading the defense, that goes a long way. He averaged 2.6 steals a game last season. So fantastic. That's exactly what you want to see. A dude can score. The dude can hit free throws. The dude can finish strong at the rim. The dude can play defense and, and uh, get steals. What else could you not, like, what, what else did you want him to do? I mean, there are some things we're going to go over that in just a second. But as far as just fundamentally talking, he's really, really good. And I don't see him falling too far into the draft. Now, he's probably going to be a second round pick. I'll just be honest with you because of his size and we're about to talk about that in just a second but the fact that he does everything else so stinking well that makes a big deal and that's a big difference and that's going to be really his calling card to the next level let's bring up the growth snare first thing I've said it like two or three times now is his lack of size he's got a little bit uh, he's short right he, he's, not, he's not short he's taller than me but he's six foot one that's short for a point guard in the NBA or just a player in the NBA just in general but size as well 175 pounds you if you think about it look at look at the guy from uh, Memphis Javon Carter who came in last year I believe it was last year if I remember correctly but he's he's six foot one as well too he's a defensive guard but he's he's built out right and he got some pretty good rotational minutes with the Memphis Grizzlies last year I feel like Shamori Pons can be the same type of player but he's got to be able to fill out his his size a little bit more and I think he definitely will. Second thing is he, he's got to shoot better with his right hand. He's so left-handed dominant, and that's fine. You can be that. Like, Lamar Odom was the same way. Julius Randle was the same way. I'm just naming off Laker players because that's my favorite. You know, that's my team. J James Harden is to an extent as well, too. He loves his left hand. But those guys have developed into the right hand as well, too, and they've, been, they've sustained 
in the league because of that. He's got to develop his right hand a little bit better. I think he will. Again, it just comes with confidence. Last thing with his growth is just run the offense better. He looks so aggressive on offense getting his own shot, which is totally fine. Don't take away any of that at all, but also develop running the offense as well as a team, as a point guard, considering the fact that you're probably not going to get a ton of early minutes, at least, you know, more than like 10, 20, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes a game. You're probably not going to be at that point right away. The fact that you can run an offense is going to help expedite the whole process and getting your uh, minutes in the game into the league. Now, let's talk about some of his career awards first, and then we'll talk about his stats. So first thing is, in 2017, he was a freshman. He did make it to the Big East All-Freshman Team. That's a re really good job by him. And then also, he was a two-time first team All-Big East Team, 2018, and of course, 2019 as well. Uh, again, going back to his scoring, he had four 30-point games last year, and he tied his career high at 37 points again. Uh, so he had 37 points on de December 1st against Georgia Tech. And then he had 37 points again. He matched it on, on Georgetown at, on January 5th. So as you can see in these numbers here, he's an aggressive scorer. He loves scoring the ball. He's confident in that kind of thing. So let's bring up his 2018-2019 stats. First thing you see, points per game, 19.7. So almost 20 points a game. Not bad at all. This is exactly what you want. The fact that he is undersized, there is a good thing saying that he is still an aggressive scorer because the last thing you want to be is short and not aggressive. <laughs> That's the last thing you want to see happen. He does that really well. He's an aggressive scorer and that's obviously a big deal probably the more consistent things and the more intriguing things is he's getting four rebounds a game as well that's not bad at all 5.1 assists and shooting 45 percent from the field not terrible at all uh, could be a little bit better or maybe on free on a field goal percentage just a little bit better but not bad at all i like the numbers of what i'm seeing from him and that this is going to help him out so much in the next league now, let's bring it to the comparison for him. This one was a little bit tough because I really was thinking, I kept on, as I'm watching his highlights and things like that, I was kept thinking like OJ Mayo or Monte Ellis, some, some kind of aggressive score for him because he's that confident. However, I kind of took it a little bit differently and I, I'm actually going to compare him to Jameer Nelson. So Jameer Nelson is kind of similar size, six foot one, not bad. He, he was a vet in league, played for a long time and he can score when he needs to, but also he can run an offense and he's a defensive guard as well too, defense first for him. So I think that's exactly how he's gonna turn into it, but maybe have a better offensive game than Jameer Nelson and a more aggressive score. Jameer Nelson was no bum whatsoever, but the fact that he's able to come into the league, have that similar size, a similar game, and be able to score aggressively and efficiently as well too, that's not bad. He's gonna get drafted on draft night, and I can't wait to see where he goes. As always guys, that was my recap of Shimori Pons. Let me know in the description uh, below what you think about the guy. As always, like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.